Norbert is on the road. They will have a conference booth at Region 5, 6, and San Jose Elite Nationals, plus GAT. Stop by and say hello. Mention Gymcastic and get additional savings on their already 10% show-only discount. Who doesn't want a discount on top of a discount? Of course, you can find more on their website at norberts.net. Remember, the show is PG-13, so you might hear a naughty word or two. I do not have any pressure. No need to put pressure on me, by the way. <laughs> I love this. And she's like, shut up, shut up, shut up, and shut up. <laughs> and you can shut up too. And shut up. Like it is a, this is Melanie protecting her mental health. The final world championships qualifier happened. We're going to tell you what happened at Asian championships, which teams qualified, which individuals, and if Chuso made her 175th world championships, plus the husband of Alicia Sacramoni, who's a sports ball guy, accidentally on purpose announced that Simone Biles is, quote, returning to compete. We will discuss. This is the 23rd. This is the 23rd episode of 2023. It's June 19th. Happy Juneteenth to everyone. And welcome to the number one gymnastics podcast in the universe. I'm Jessica and I'm here with Spencer from the Balance Beam Situation. And first, we talked about this on Behind the Scenes when it happened, but this is our first episode back to regular news since this happened. So um, let's discuss how Brady Quinn, who was a sports ball announcer guy, um, announced on his show that quote Simone Biles is returning to compete unquote um we've talked about her being in the gym for a long time and talked about her um you know seeing her in the pictures from a lot of people um that I did an interview with um Sumana Saker recently where I asked her and I told her you don't have to you know, talk about this if you don't want to. That's how I prefaced it. But I, I asked, do you know, what's it like training in the gym with Simone? And she said, you know, she's here sometimes and it's like amazing to work out with her. So um, what do you think if, uh, what do you think the repercussions should be for this happening uh, for <laughs> an athlete? <laughs> repercussions? And what would you do if you were Simone? Oh, Ah, that's not a big deal. Would right? you just ignore it and let it go? Yeah. Or you'd be super pissed. No. You're Simone. You don't have to stoop to every level. Just live your life. You would buy she an island that, and go on she vacation. She had that somewhere. like luxurious wedding. She can come into the gym when she wants or not. Just like, you know, chill out and then like throw a triple triple. Because that's what you, when you're Simone, that's what you can do. You can just be like, I'm going to chill out and then throw a triple, triple. I think I would ask, I would have my agent tell USA Gymnastics that this is the second such leak. Because we know what happened during, which wasn't necessarily Alicia's fault. Because it was John Roethlisberger during NCA season who asked Alicia. So now that Simone's training again, um, I... But I think I would have my agent call USAG and be like, you know, there needs to be some assurance of some kind of a let the gymnasts announce, not it get out other ways. Eh, you're assuming that this is some sort of breach. Right. It might not be maybe a breach. She's fine with, maybe she's fine with it. It might be a Let's soft. Talk about it. Don't talk about it. A soft, soft launch. launch. <laughs> <laughs> soft launch. Let it leak. Let people get excited. Um, yeah. I mean, she hasn't announced that she's back training to compete in public. You know, she just isn't hiding that, you know, take yeah. pictures of people in the gym and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I just think for a lot of people that have lost trust in USA Gymnastics, it's another not, you know, USA Gymnastics has done a lot to build up the trust again. Um, especially their social media person is amazing. Their pride, um, the how they're leaning into pride and doing profiles during pride how they are clapping back at the homophobes on twitter i love how they're embracing juneteenth like this is a whole new usa gymnastics and that their pr is so much better in that way but like then you have these kind of potential leaks not mm -hmm. you know not I don't verified. read this as nearly as big of a deal as you do i would be so pissed if i was simone 
Like, I would be, but then again, like, you know, she has her, she's living her life. But if, like, I wanted to announce it my own way, uh huh, I would be really mad and be like, here's another reason I don't want to work with you. You can't keep yeah. a damn secret. <laughs> but you're, that's assuming it is a secret. Right. Like, I don't, you know. You're so, right, so casual. You, I'm glad I, I can take the rage roll for once. You could, Oh yeah, that's so rare for us that you are the rage meter. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm I'm probably you know over casual right. about it, but that's fine. So <laughs> I'm like, still, eh, yeah, what happened? This- Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just making sure everybody knows, like, this is nothing official. This is something he said. Like, Simone has said nothing, and yeah, we yeah. But I think it's an it's important to talk about USAG's role in this kind of thing being said. Um, so Spencer. You look like yeah. you went to Asian Championships this uh, this week because you look like you spent you were in sunny Singapore, um, <laughs> very very you sunny. Look like you spent too long in the sun. Is that what? Yes, you're Yes, I to say have right not reprimanded you yet for not using enough <laughs> sunscreen. We'll do that um, on behind the screen. That the is was not the problem. I would like to say the amount of sunscreen I used <laughs> it was epic clearly <laughs> it was a problem i'm gonna buy you one of those giant hats like you know no. ladies on the french riviera wear no that's okay asian championships is there yeah. any other way to qualify for worlds can you go to a world cup is this it? it's over it's over done. the c- world's qualification is done the the die is cast your fate is sealed it's all over now uh so yeah asian championships over the weekend we saw on the women's side, there were two more team spots available for Worlds. South Korea and Taiwan got those spots, so they joined China and Japan, who had already qualified for Worlds in 2022. So those are the four teams from Asia. Not a surprise. This is kind of what we expected to happen. South Korea is a really, really strong team right now. They qualified very comfortably. Taiwan, the surprise was not that they qualified, but that it was as close as it ended up being. Because last year... Taiwan got the same spot, the final spot from Asia, and had, did it by an eight-point margin. This year, it was a two-point margin over Kazakhstan and the Philippines. So it got really exciting and, and really close. In Kazakhstan, there. too. That's freaking exciting yeah. for them. Mm-hmm. They had a great competition as well. And the Philippines, which we were all watching because Aliyah Finnegan competing for the Philippines, which she had done once before last year at the Southeast Asian Games. Um, Emma Malibuyo competing for the Philippines for the first time, both on this team. We were kind of wondering how it was going to go. How are these routines translating to elite? Is this a full enough team? They also had Kylie Kwame, who is uh, competes level 10 in the U.S. She is verbally committed to Alabama. She won a uh, vault and beam in her age group at Dev Nationals this year. She was also on the team. So we didn't really know how that was going to go because it's a lot of people who either don't compete elite a lot or haven't competed elite in this code or, you know, have level 10 composition or NCAA composition on some events. And overall, it was a really, really strong competition for the Philippines. And if you're watching uh, along with us, we're watching some of Aaliyah Finnegan's vaulting right now where she was like, yeah, I have a Yurchenko one and a half and the Omelianchik. I can do both. And I, they would both score really well in NCAA. I've been doing the because that's, you know, I want to get a 10. But, you know, Almost I have to Almost stuck her one and a half. I was so yeah. stoked for her. How'd she do in the all around? Uh, yeah, she got second among the, um, in el- the people who were still eligible to get uh, world championships qualification spots. So there were eight spots available. She got second among those athletes, qualified comfortably. Had a really win- I want to say win by not beat China and... Uh, South Korea, but win of the the Philippines. Yeah, and she and was the she was second in that group. Um, she had a really strong beam and floor. Uh, fell on bars. We didn't see that in the broadcast, but it was one of those things. There was a lot of like watching bars in the background, and we could yeah. see bits of it. Like we saw her run to start her bars routine, and then return to the chalk bucket a little too soon. And it was like, I know what must have happened there, oh, uh, but crap. we did not. I didn't see that, but uh, but not yeah. enough to keep her out of world. So that's freaking exciting. No, she had plenty of mar- ended up having plenty of margin and really strong routines. Um, and made three event finals, event finals on the other events, got two bronzes on vault and beam. So really successful competition for her and for the whole Philippines team. They ended up, so they started on beam. They outscored Taiwan on beam. They outscored Taiwan on floor. They outscored Taiwan on vault. And it was like, if they had the bars depth, 
they would have qualified, but they only had three routines and they were going to always basically going to end up counting a score in the single digits. So they were basically one, one more bars routine away from qualifying to worlds, which is a tremendous, like if you're, if you're new to being a fan of like the Philippines women's gymnastics team, as of like three days ago, because Finnegan and Malibuyo are on the team. Usually the Philippines does not have a full team. They don't have enough gymnasts to send a full team. They don't compete. So this is a huge change for them to have a full team and to score this well. They've only sent athletes to Worlds three times ever before. And just like one athlete. And this year, both Aliyah Finnegan and Kylie Kwame qualified for the all-around. So they'll have two all-arounders at Worlds this year. So it's a big change uh, for the Philippines, a big deal that they got as close as they did. And if you're, you know, if these athletes decide to continue competing for the Philippines in future years, should they want to, it's a seismic change in the hierarchy of Asian women's gymnastics. And I think we'll make the other teams pretty nervous because suddenly Taiwan was like, Oh, it came mm -hmm. pretty close. Not yeah. as close as, uh, not as dire as it was for the Taiwanese men, but they almost had a, a repeat of the same situation. I want to, before we look at Malibuyo's um, floor, which I love the Leo that she wore, by the way, it's like black with like sparkle shoulders, like almost military-ish sparkles. That's how I'm interpreting it. But um, I love that Leo. But I, I do wonder, because I'm me, and I know that yeah. not everyone's like me, and everyone what? has their own interpretation and reason they're doing it. like for me <laughs> for me i'm How like dare they? sometimes i wonder if the belarusian americans who competed for belarus look back now and think about the war in ukraine and if they ever think like oh did we help the you know military might via sport belarusian you know political aims by competing for them um and i wonder if people you know i think like if i you know went and competed for italy or ireland um if i would think oh am i helping with those aims and i know countries are different but um the philippines still has a really problematic uh leader in that country and i wonder if they think like uh about the political implications of competing for uh, for that country, um, or if they think about it's a kind of revenge competition. Like, look, we if we hadn't immigrated to the United States, our families, our ancestors, we wouldn't be in this amazing position to help this country and lift your team so much. Ha ha. Like, there's many ways to look at it. It's and so for me, you. it's such it's a so you me. approach to this. I'm like, what are you even thinking about? <laughs> and I'm sure no one else is thinking that, but that's what I think about. And then I always wor I worry for them, too, because I'm like, oh, my God, like, Carlos Yulo has been, you know, he, he might not say it this way, but I would say in some ways used by um, their president for political aims. And I worry for them that the same thing would happen. Um, so anyway, that's just my aside of politics mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. in very general sense. And now we can return to the gymnastics. And we I can watch Emma Bellabuyo's angle. Yes. <laughs> her awesome floor, which she used her... Um, her college routine, which is so freaking good. Um, and she added some things in this routine. So yeah. she, and one, we should say one all individual silver, uh, individual silver medal on floor. She also ended up qualifying to the beam final. She was originally first reserve, but then someone pulled out. So she also competed in the beam final. Um, it's interesting to watch her floor routine because it already, the floor routine she was competing at UCLA already translates really well to the elite code and it has good completion and she gets some bonus for it. Um, and then, you know, she's Emma Balbuyo, So she's like, I'm going to add a triple wolf turn, right? I should add a triple, I should add an E dance element to my floor routine at the last second. I'll add a triple wolf turn and I'm going to over rotate it. It's going to be fine. Yeah. And so, you know, it's the impressiveness of Emma Malibuyo that she's able to add like multiple dance elements just uh, like at the drop of a hat, just to be like, let's throw this in. Let's throw that in. I can have my D score with this. Sure. Why not? So, you know, it was interesting to watch her in comparison to Aaliyah Finnegan's floor. Ooh, technically, Finnegan's routine, I would say, is bigger. She has a bigger pass, like she opens with that double, double Arabian. It's really well executed, and we see that regularly from her. Um, but it's interesting that her routine has a lower D score because it's not quite as elite friendly in terms of the dance elements and the the composite, like the order of the passes 
because Malibuyo ends with a double Salto, so she gets another two in bonus there that Finnegan doesn't get. So it's interesting to see whose routine translates better, and it's not necessarily even whose routine is the most difficult, but just what naturally works better with the elite, co- the elite code. And then it's the opposite on beam where Finnegan has a super elite friendly beam routine that she's competing in NCAA and adds a ton of difficulty that she's not competing in NCAA. Like she finished he, this beam routine with a side aerial back handspring layout, one and a half dismount. She's not doing that in college. She's going to get a 10 and do her gain or fall, but she right. was able to add that and add that seamlessly um, and have a really competitive score and get that bronze medal on beam. So I think that was my main takeaway of seeing uh, Finnegan and Malbuyo and Kwame compete is how, you know, this was kind of a, a last minute thing for a lot of them. Like Malibu, this was fairly a late decision, uh-huh. I think, right, for Malibuyo. And as of NCAAs, at least, Aaliyah Finnegan was not really sure or at least publicly was saying she wasn't really sure what her plan was going to be competing for the Philippines. You would not have known that based on their performances. Their performances at this meet were looked like they had been planning to do this for a long time. And they had been preparing for this for a long time because they hit really well and really comfortably. So it was at least for Finnegan, like much better than last time when she was just missing a split leap on floor to complete that she left they out fixed, to they finish. Fixed they the fixed the dance that. element problem yeah. on floor. Yeah. So um, I'm excited there to were see no, what like, she composition disasters. Right. That's what I mean. Like it was a be- yeah. it was it was better planned, better thought out with the with routines. I'm excited to see what else she changes on floor uh for worlds because I think there is no reason mm-hmm. she can't be in the qualifying group um when we're looking at who makes it to Paris. I think that oh, she yeah. she's has a- definitely in contention. Yeah. Right. Big time. So I hope they like fine tune those elements to like get her in a better position. I also want to give a shout out. Oh, go ahead. I was, one more thing about Aaliyah is that she already here got a really competitive, what I think should be a competitive score for qualifying to the Olympics from Worlds. And she did it while falling on bars and getting a 10. Yes. So even it's- like these routines with a four event hit, you always want to buffer because like, you know, things happen and beam is beam. So you always want some some leeway in terms of your score, but yeah, she's already right on track to getting yeah. a spot for the Olympics. So like 51 ish is 51 four ish is where she could have potentially finished without that with fall. a hit with a hit. Yeah. Which should, I would very much expect that that is going to qualify to Paris. That could even like, she could, if she adds back a little bit more on floor composition, like she could make the all around final. I think that's, yeah. that's a reasonable mm-hmm. aim for Aaliyah. Yeah, this is my favorite thing about people going to other countries, because it's like, yes, you are this good. Yes, you should be in that group. Um, And I love it for their families, too, which speaking of shout out to all the fans in Singapore. What a great crowd they they had here. And like, honestly, shout out to um, Singapore Gymnastics for how well they organize this, because it really is. I was talking to a friend last night about this. Like, it is the organizer's job to make sure there's a crowd there. And we were talking about how few people were at Osajek World Cup and how empty it was. And the same with, like, the Israel World Cup. Like, yeah, it, like, sold out, but there was, like, 30 seats um, in the whole the whole venue. Uh, like, literally, you guys. I mean, there were... <laughs> There was, it was a tiny arena they had it in. But, and I just think it's so impressive where they had like every session was streaming. You could watch it easily. They had full results available. They had excellent Almost coverage. <laughs> of, well, yeah. After um, I hyped it on behind the scenes, then it broke, of course. But at least there was a live a stream available. Yeah. Like sometimes things go wrong. You, you know, sometimes internet is not the best it can be. But, um, they had really fun videos they did with the gymnasts, little like TikTok dances they did. Um, shout out to especially Flip Fly Tumble, Emily, who did a great, like she's a Brevet judge, longtime gym nerd, and she did the great coverage to um, the great crowd. Like I want Singapore to bid on Worlds, one, because I really want to go there. But also I think they've showed that they can put on a really good event. They'll definitely have to do some serious education of the gymnasts and federations before they arrive to not get anyone arrested and caned. But other than that, I feel like they're, I totally want to go there and I feel like they proved they can put on a really great event. So I'm, I'm stoked for Singapore to host worlds after how well they did this. Um, Okay. So we talked about um, who qualified um, the team. So we have 
China was already qualified. China and um, Japan already qualified. Yep. Can, do you want to talk about how Japan didn't even send a women's team, even though they sent a men's team? <laughs> yes, I do. Well, they, then they, do? Yeah, because they don't care. Well, first of all, the women are already qualified. But, like, they just yeah. are like, meh. They could have even sent, like, a B team to get experience. Yeah. But, like, the women just don't. They, I mean, it's, I bet if you had, like, a spreadsheet of money spent on women and men in Japanese Gymnastics Federation, it would be the men are, like, overflowing the top of the spreadsheet and the women are, uh-huh. like, barely a boop on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, like. And it's Asian championships. It's a big deal. Like, why not compete as much as possible? Oh, it makes me crazy. Even the U.S. is sending women to World Cups, you guys. Even the U.S. <laughs> Come on. Oh, there's just no excuse uh, for that. But anywho. Okay, anywho, so we have all around qualification. Teams. There were eight spots. Um, want to talk about a few people who did not get uh, all around world qualification spots. So Emma Malabuyo did not compete the all around here, which she had said in advance that she wasn't going to. She's going to compete beam and floor, which is what she did. So she was not able to qualify to worlds this year because she didn't do the all around here and the Philippines didn't qualify as a team. So that's kind of the end of that part of the road for her. Uh, Olympics still a possibility to qualify. There's still avenues, although, you know, it depends on how, you know, how in how in and committed are you to that as the main goal? Because like their 2024 apparatus World Cups, yeah, they're during NCAA That's season. The thing. Yeah, so she has like to go you to would World have Cups. to choose you would have to choose one or the other if you're gonna go that way because you can't just like dip to Baku and Doha for a few weeks in the middle of the NCAA season. UCLA would be like, absolutely not. We need you. I don't <laughs> either. Know, you though. you know do what Jordan Childs did and defer the season or you know you're there to compete at least that's what i would do if i were them the ucla I... may be like emma we love you and support you and everything you want to do and whatever you want to do is perfect and you're perfect you're amazing i feel like uh i feel like they're she has been consistent enough and proven herself enough that she always hits when she competes that if she has routines that she thinks she could get a legitimate high enough score to qualify um that they would let her do it. How many? She'd have to go to three, right? To qualify. At least three. Yeah. How but, likely I mean, if you're is it? Trying though? to qualify for beam, which I think would be where she could add a ton of difficulty or floor. Um, you want to back up. Like it's not like Jade going for vault where it's like, come on, she's gonna win. <laughs> yeah. It's like you need you need some buffers out. I mean, if the Russian team goes... Yeah, if the Russians are available, no, there's no chance. Then I feel like you are just skip it. Everyone but, else is going to give they up. Do, they do fall on beam a lot, though. But they could fall yeah. and still make it. That's the thing. So I think, it. yeah, I would see... I would look at beam, look at her upgrades, and then see who's competing and decide. But I think she could totally do it. And I think they would mm-hmm. let her do it. Another option would be... There's one more spot for Asian championships in the all-around. Which is tough. It's one day, one person. You have to hit. But, you know, if she is adding back her difficulty on vault and bars to go with beam and floor, why not? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like, if Finnegan are, qualifies at Worlds, yeah. then, you know, but there's also going to be, I mean, we'll see what happens by next year. The FIG might be like, oh, release, you know, release Russia to compete get their one spot (laughs) at the Asian championships and then it's like well why bother yeah yeah club gym nerd get discounts and first dibs on live show tickets and extra podcasts every week athlete dossiers code guides commission your own segments of the show it also makes a great gift check it out at gymcastic.com at the join the club tab and a lot of respect and for chuso as well because we should talk about her Okay, I want I uh, I I really really did you guys dirty with the intro of did she make it to her 175th world? So you guys, yeah, she just, did, but from, not this from this meet. But not from this meet. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Chuso ended up uh, coming eight tenths short of the all around cutoff that she would have needed to have qualified to worlds in the all around. The great pain is that uh, for us and the world, is that if she had used her second vault as her first vault, her all-around score would have been high enough. 
and she would have qualified in one of the eight spots to Worlds, but she struggled at her first fault. She was doing a handspring lay full as her first fault. In the team competition, she struggled on it. Either sat it down or almost sat it down in a big lunge. Uh, it was a lot better in the vault event final, which is when she won silver with that and a souk full. Um, so that was inc more encouraging that she can, you know, have the vault difficulty back her more closer to her normal difficulty and can hit it. Um, but this does potentially change the Chuso Olympic qualification watch pathways because she won't be able to compete the all around at Worlds, So she couldn't qualify in a world's all around spot, which is how she qualified last time. She did still make worlds though. Through the Apparatus World Cups, she qualified on Vault, and by my count, when you redistribute the points, although this has not been confirmed by the FIG yet, I think she qualified for bars as a bar specialist, too. Shut up. <laughs> Get my out. my favorite thing ever. Bar specialist, Oksana Chusovitna. So yeah, I was, you know, redistributing the points of people who qualified and how they did it, and I'm like, oh yeah, Chuso's top eight on bars. <laughs> Every she time did I two competitions. Every time I see her on bars, I'm like, this is like if you had watching like when you like see an ex that you had like, you know, you had something at one time, but you have like a messy makeout sesh in a bar in the corner. And it's just like, where oh, are we going here? What is? This? Oh, it's just you can <laughs> hardly watch, but it, you still are like, oh, I remember the spark. That's how I feel when Chuso does bars. I feel like this is what, like, she's like, you again? I better make mm -hmm. the best of it. Here we go. But she What? That's not like, how you feel she, when you watch her do bars? With no grips? Thumbs around the bars? She, for <laughs> as much as Chuso does not want to be doing bars, and it's you very clear. You can ignore me all you want, Spencer. hits that routine. She yeah, can she hit does. that routine. And she can. like a... She does something she can hit, and she's going to do her overshoot, not to handstand, even though that's not in the elite code, and she's going to be like, whatever, I'm Chuso. And probably she's, she's going to get her doing, 11. She's, she's been, been doing that doing, for 40 years. Yeah, yeah, literally, she's probably been doing those. that routine, can hit those skills since she was 10 years old. At least 10, maybe 9. So... Yeah, she's like... she. I don't think she did the touch warm-up. We Why? didn't see the full. Oh, God, no. But her she's hands like... Hurt. they. Yeah, the, the gymnast went up, and I was like, oh, no, Chuso's not going to do bars. I thought, like, oh, she's not going to compete the all-around, because at, the rest of the Uzbek team goes and does their touch warm-up, and she put on her warm-up jacket and walked away. And I was like, oh, she's not going to compete beat bars. And she was like, no, I'm going to compete bars just as little as humanly possible. I'm not going to do a touch warm-up. I'm not going to look at them. I'm just going to get up and resent them and then qualify the Worlds <laughs> as a bar specialist. But I cannot... I, like I know it's Chuso and she's a superhuman and all that yeah. stuff, but like the cardio it requires to do a bar routine. Like I know floor is like harder, but it's a whole different kind of cardio to get through bars. And I commend her for not warming up because honestly, your recovery time changes as you get older too. You can't warm up and then go right away again. And by right away, I mean ten minutes later when uh, you have to do your bar routine. So recover. I would. I mean, I want scientists to study her in a lab and see what her recovery time is. But I think for safety wise, she's like, Ugh. and also I can hit this routine, you know, anytime. I've been doing it since I was nine years old, so it's fine. Chuso. The legend yeah. continues. So at Worlds, what does she right. have to do? So there's still some pathways. All right. At Worlds this year, where she will be able to compete vault, also bars, but we're not really, <laughs> she's not going to qualify to Worlds Olympics as a bar specialist, although you guys, um, there is one spot available at Worlds for vault. To I think that's tough be to the Olympics. To the Olympics, right. But when she goes to Worlds, I just want to remind everybody, this isn't like the olden days where, the olden days, last Olympic cycle, where... Way back Jessica's favorite <laughs> Olympic qualification procedure that literally every Ever. other human hated. Yeah. You, it, you can show up at Worlds, and even though you just qualified through the all-around system for vault, she can compete all-around at Worlds. No. She cannot compete all-around at Worlds. She, you can compete all-around at the Olympics, even if right. you qualify on an event. That so it's not like the Olympic olden days. It is just going for vault and bars when they do the points yeah. at Worlds. Those yeah. are the only events she can compete. So she can't make it as an all arounder via Correct. Worlds, Correct. which was and like is she going to make it? I mean, there's always a possibility everyone falls on vault. 
that happens sometimes. I think, you know, she, I think she's <laughs> in it among all the people. There are a lot of people who are pre-qualified because their countries are qualified who are the top vaulters, so they're not going to be eligible. I think she can be up there, but I'm pointing to someone like Yo So Jong from right. South Korea who won the gold medal here at the Asian Championships on vault, who has the handspring front double full named after her. We haven't seen her do that in a long time, but she's very comfortable with the handspring Rudy, um, who you would expect that will get the spot that way she could also go in the all-around but korea has some other all-arounders um who could get that spot so there are some there's some tough competition to get it that way there are also two more spots at the vault apparatus world cups in 2024 that chusa would be eligible for i think that's her best route barring the appearance of russians (laughs) like if melnikova can compete as an individual appearance of russians (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically, that's what it is for everyone it in is. every context watching the 2024 and how they're going to get to the Olympics. Yeah, it's barring the appearance of Russians, because suddenly if, like, Melnikova shows up with a chung, it's like, all right, well, that's that's all over now for everyone else. Bye. This is the real asterisk of this quad. Barring the asterisk, barring the appearance of Russians. Russians yeah. on the horizon at any time, then. Yeah, it's going to change. It would change everything in qualification. Yeah. But if not, if they're not there, I really like Chuso's chance to get it, make it through the vault, vault World Cups at the beginning of 2024. So I think that's still her best route. Um, we should talk about, like, actually the top of the medal stands at this competition. Because the most yes. interesting thing was qualifying world's qualification and what happened there but you know china the china china did send a women's team they looked at japan and they were like oh you're not even gonna bother where we're gonna you don't want to practice oh yeah you think you're coming for all of our beam medals no we don't (laughs) think so so china won team gold they fended off a really strong performance from south korea south korea got silver uh china won with a 163 529 so i wanted to kind of look at where that compares to yes. other countries who else in their continental championships and where they're ranking so the u.s team at pan ams got a 163.7 so almost exactly the same score that china got here Great and that Britain's was the pan am team minus everyone we think is going to make the olympic team so but a good i mean a good team who did well yeah they did well but i'm saying um, that's without then, the stars yes and then Great Britain at the European Championships with a 164.4. That was the top team score of any of the continental championships. But I think China should be extremely pleased with this performance and how this team of all brand new seniors performed. I really liked this strategy from China that they took a team knowing that they had already qualified for Worlds as a team. So this is about, you know, there's nothing outside the meat riding on this, but it's still a championship scenario, a pressure-packed scenario. They decided to send just the new ones. So the veterans that we're familiar with are going to have, uh, they're like, they're going to send a team to the university games. People like Wei Xiaoyan, who's two-time world uh, bars champion, people we know who are definitely still in the mix. They're going to go to other meets. We're going to send all the babies to this competition and just sort of throw them into the fire and see how they react. And I think that's a really good experience for yes. them. And they fared very well in Experience, it. Japan. Experience. <laughs> good for you. Because they got this score that's right now very competitive. And yes, the U.S. is going to add a lot of gymnasts. And right now is the on-paper heavy favorite to repeat as world team gold medalists if they have, you know, your Sunnis and your Jades and your Jordans and all of that. But uh, this is really competitive from not necessarily China's top team, but a lot of athletes who are making a name for themselves in terms of world team qualification. What I really liked is that uh, they did not go to pieces when they had mistakes because they did have mistakes. This was by no means a perfect performance, but we saw that they started on floor, very first floor routine, very first pass fall. And I was watching it and I was like, "Uh Oh, it's going to, it's going to be one of these <laughs> China team finals performances. And then every time someone fell, the next person hit a really good routine and they didn't carry it from one event to the next or one routine for the next. And it ended up that this, you know, the vault, the bars and beam strategy that I think China is going to have to do again this year was just like, we're going to send amazing bars and beam routines. And then hopefully that counteracts floor and vault. And it worked. 
Because they, you know, hit enough of the bars and beam routines that they could have, you know, lower vault scores, mostly lower floor scores, and still win and still put up a good result. So it can work. It just often doesn't because there's like some sort of catastrophic opening routine on bars and beam, and then the scores are gone. But yeah, I, I think China should be really pleased overall with the quality of the new seniors in this performance. And I think the new seniors made very good arguments for like, we are muscling our way onto these teams and replacing some of the gymnasts who've been there before because they're showing up to championship um, contexts and hitting. Muscling their way, even in those giant to the floor winter jackets that well, they wear. You need them to all. muscle your way in. You do. You just, you just get out of the way yes and then you won't get hurt either because they're so puffy they're like being in a giant bubble wrap so you can't muscle people out of the way i want (laughs) to talk about choo choo yuen because i'm obsessed with her we've talked about her so many times um and we've talked a lot about her beam where she's gotten a 6 8 d um with her redonkulous um flip-flop arabian but her laid out jaeger is Uh we need a new name for this it's so spectacular. It's actually, laid out. <laughs> it's actually laid out like the openest tips you can have without arching. It's so beautiful. Her releases are so freaking high. And so I feel like we should call we have the Jesus Banana Vault, the handspring front layout. So okay. I suggest that we call her laid out Jaeger a um Jesus No Banana. It rolls right off the tongue. It that does, right? To catch on. Yeah. We need a name for how spectacular this is because it's so spectacular. Um, yeah. So, on bars. Yeah. On bars, one gold in the event final, even with a fall, because that's what happens when you have a 6-7-D score. <laughs> you could fall on a chef half and be like, yeah, I still won the, the, the uh, bars title. But she did hit in qualification slash team all-around competition. With her 670, 15-2. So that's how you win a team final with a bars yeah. and beam strategy. If you have someone who's hitting a 15-2, it kind of doesn't matter if your vaults aren't that difficult because 15-2. Uh, so won the all around in the that 54, first A 54. Not 44 yes. like I wrote down because numbers and I can't, and I but like, a 54. Absolutely not. I was like a 44. <laughs> like, that's not that, right. would not, that would not have won. 54, um, yeah, 9 through so, 2. But she got two per country out of the beam final, Jessica. Don't that I can't I'm not high. I'm not ready to talk about it yet. <laughs> if you could just redact your conversation about right, that, right. I would really I appreciate pre- it. I will pretend. We'll we won't talk about her getting two per country out of the beam final. We're just gonna talk about Zhang Qingying making the beam final with a 14-8 in qualification and then winning with a 14-2, hitting beam two competitions in a row. So yes. miraculous. But I think almost uh, even more important than her beam routine, which is amazing, is the fact that she won floor gold with mid-13s, which when you're putting together a Chinese team looking toward a world championship, that's the win. That's it's like huge. worth more. That's worth more than a 14-8 on beam. A 13-5 on floor is so much more important because she's hitting floor. She's getting good scores. The D score is competitive. Like, just put her on the world's team right now because they absolutely need that routine. Next thing you know, they're going to be winning vault and getting like 14s on vault with oh. the way that they're headed. I'm knocking on wood with what I just <laughs> said. Also, her, cra- I mean, she, I mean, we've talked about it before, but her freaking uh, sideways Corbett is yeah. just so freaking high. <laughs> it's so good. Her jump sideways are so good. Um, also, this Leo that she wore, I can't decide if it's tie-dye or if it's like, um, you know, I'm against this generally, but when you have like an icy <laughs> flavored thing and then they swirl some kind of dairy product in it, if that mm. is what it's like, if it's, no, strawberries and cream, when it melts, then maybe this is what it is. <laughs> It's a it's a very unique look. I it's, feel like it's, it's a, a the raspberry look. parfait leotard. That's what you're. That's what it looks is? like. Okay. Which yeah, I um, g- in general, you know, dairy and fruit shouldn't <laughs> mix, in my personal opinion. But anywho, I want to talk about South Korea and how well they did. Yeah, South Korea got a one sixty as a team. That is a world's team final kind of score. So you know, I kind of thought. Th- South Korea would have a chance at winning the team title here if China had like 
a meltdown, which they did not have. So they were able to, you know, re- win gold comfortably, uh, relatively comfortably. But South Korea, really strong team result. This is the exact same team that they sent, the same five gymnasts they sent to Worlds last year, who scored a 153 in qualification. And this year they got a 160 at the Asian Championships. And yes, it's a different composition, competition, different judges, not Worlds, but it's a tremendous uh, level of improvement. And every, like, Chuso fans would really, really love for South Korea to finish top 12 at Worlds and make uh, the Olympics as a team. So then Yo- Yo So Jong wouldn't be eligible for that vault spot. And yeah. Chuso's got, like, knocked one more out of the way of the people who might be trying to get a vault spot. And she can, you know, jump up there. And I think it's very doable for the South Korean team. Um, and one of these days, South Korea is going to make a Worlds team final as a team and everyone's going to be like wow south korea made it and you're going to be like no i knew they were going to because spencer said it that's right remember this moment you guys (laughs) remember this moment because south korea is going to make a world team final like kind of soon so what was the biggest surprise of all the world qualifications for you of all the teams oh shockingly i'm going to talk about men because the taiwanese men's team did not qualify to worlds There were two spots available, and they went to Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. Taiwanese men did not make it. This is a big deal because they were in the team final at 2019 Worlds. They were top eight at 2019 Worlds. And now this year, they didn't even make Worlds as one of the 24 teams. So that was a big surprise for me. Most of the things... um, that Most of the qualification, most of the teams went pretty much as expected or similar to last year, or, you know, about what seemed normal. This was the one time where I was like, oh, I would not have called that. That's what happens when everyone falls like eight times on Pommel Horse, which would like Lee Chikai got like a low 12 on Pommel Horse. Oh, you know that things Lee are Lee Chikai, the Pommel Horse our god. Fav- our favorite Pommel Horse worker who understands that the whole point of Pommel Horse is flares. So your whole routine should be flares. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for getting it. Oh, anyone that doesn't do that, you guys, I can't even. (laughs) We'll be right back after this. Before we talk about um, what happened with uh, Carlos Yulo and French National Championships, where um, Melanie de Jos Santos competed, um, and Japan World Team, and crazy skills by the Dutch, and a controversy at the Osijek mm. World Cup. What happens mm. when judging goes wrong and everybody knows it? I do want to talk about our uh, club commission giveaway. So, yeah. So make sure that your club gymnast membership is up to date, that you are in, as they say, good standing with that you can get in and see everything um, because we're giving away a whole entire commission. Um, And why are we doing this? Because we want to encourage you guys um, as members to support us because as you may have noticed in the world, there is a little financial situation going on and advertising revenue is down. And so we want to thank you guys for being club gym members because this is how we can afford to travel to events like classic national championships worlds and uh we want to thank you guys so the only way you can win this commission because uh you we're not doing them you can't just order them anymore there are group commissions but um for a regular commission where you get us to talk about anything you want that's tangentially gymnastics related as long as it has something that's what tangential means something oh. gymnastics a whole hour and a half of us talking about whatever you want us to talk about. Um, all you have to do is be a member of Club Gym Nerd, and then we're going to pick a random winner at uh, the end of the month, and we will announce who the winner is um, at the beginning of July. So thanks to all of our members. Um, thanks to everybody who's donated also. And thanks to, we have a couple people. We have new two group commissions, because those are available, where you we have the Keanu Reeves movie now has supporters <laughs> for us to do a commission. And what was the other one? Um, the Amy, uh, the uh, Perfect Body movie now has um, commissioners too. So we are on our way to getting those done. Um, so if you want to contribute to those, those are available. Also, our store, 
oh my gosh, you guys, we got a spreadsheet spreadsheets for Spencer design. That's awesome. <laughs> so hopefully that'll be in the store. And the store also has like albums categories. You can search for, you know, whatever you're looking for. Um, Club Gym Nerd members get a, uh, a discount. It's straights for Spencer. I'm sorry, not spreadsheets. Straights for Spencer. <laughs> Um, and the forum is always available if you want to chat and, um, there's a bunch of meetups being planned and people talking about tickets. And so check that out as well. And thank you guys all for supporting us, all of our club gym members. And we'll see you every Friday on behind the scenes at noon Pacific, where you get a live Q and a with us. And also this week, we're going to talk about what happened in, uh, San Diego that made Spencer look like a lobster this week, because <laughs> I... <laughs> He would not tell me and is a saving for behind the scenes. So we'll see you guys there. Okay. I want to take a moment to talk about Carlos Yulo. Please do. Oh, you guys. The is he good at gymnastics? King of the Philippines, Carlos Yulo, competed here. Qualified, obviously, duh, to world. Obviously, yeah. I just, you guys, it's just not. Why does anybody else care? Like, try, I mean. I mean, they should care because they should try to look like Carlos Hulo. Like, I, there's just, I, you know, sometimes I think, oh, he's like back in the day, like the old Soviets or the old Cuban gymnasts or like he's the closest thing we have to name off. And then I'm just like, no, he's just, his gymnastics is so much better than anyone ever. His form is so freaking good. He just did like a basic front layout and was just like, mm, I don't need to do a lot of difficulty. I'm just going to do a front layout. And it's like the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. So I just wanted to take a, a moment to appreciate the unparalleled awesomeness that is Carlos Yulo. And I can't wait to see him at Worlds. And mm -hmm. that's all. <laughs> that's basically When you it. watch Carlos Yulo, you realize why most routines should have execution scores in the sixes. Right. I think he almost got a nine on floor in E score in uh, at this meet, or may have gotten a nine, which is just uh, what that's a that's a vault with your legs straddled <laughs> and cowboyed and falling off the mat score for vault. No one gets a nine E score on freaking floor, especially in men's gymnastics. Oh, the horror <laughs> with all the twisting legs. Oh, uh, just. When you when you watch Carlos Yulo, you realize that E score deductions aren't high enough, and everyone else should be in the fives. That's <laughs> how I feel. I don't know about you guys, but um, okay. So French nationals happened, and we're gonna watch mm -hmm. Melanie. If you're watching along, um, compete on bars. So Melanie competed two events. Um, it's mm -hmm. her first competition back in 2023. Um, she obviously won bars. Duh. Um, she got bronze on beam. She got a six three D score on bars, um, and her bars. Why? Why is her E score not higher? Like I don't. Did they watch the same routine? I don't. <laughs> she got a high E score, but not high enough because she's but, Melanie. Didn't they understand? I know she's Melanie, but there are things. Her legs are perfectly glued together and toes pointed. I mean, she does miss some handstands, but handstands are dumb. So, you know how I feel about those. <laughs> deductions are dumb when they happen to Melanie. I know. Right. We know you're on record that deductions don't count when you're talking about Melanie. That is one of the rules <sighs> of gymnastics. But yes, yeah. it is. So she did an interview <laughs> with Lekeep, and she said, quote, I don't have the same body as before. She laughs. Um, uh I'm slightly more tired and I have to preserve my knee, even if it's much better. This will be my first competition of the season. It's just fun to be back in, but I don't want to destroy myself physically. Smart, Melanie. Very smart. Um, she said re new skills that she's added. She never learned an aerial on beam um, or a double wolf. 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 That's what we should call them. Wolf. Like that <laughs> ca alien character from Star Trek. Wolf. Yeah. That's what I think we should call them now. Do you think Worf is hot? What was that with the eyebrows? I that was I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> um, anyway, she never learned a double wolf turn before, um, and so she also said in this that she refuses to proclaim unrealistic and unrealistic ambitions let alone talking about medals quote i do not have any pressure no need to put pressure on me by the way <laughs> i love this and she's like shut up shut up shut up and shut up <laughs> and you can shut up too and shut up like it is a 
this is Melanie protecting her mental health by being like, shut it. I'm going to do my gymnastics. I'm going to enjoy myself. And that's it. And I love this for her because her gymnastics has never been the problem. It's always been her surroundings and the pressure that was put on her and negative coaching. And I'm so glad to see her putting it out there that everyone can shut it. Um, she also, I thought you would appreciate this translation. Um, by the way, our show is PG 14. Here it comes quote. This is the French translation. She also uh -huh. decided to be operating on her fucking right knee. <laughs> I mean, where, where's the lie? I was like, what? Oh, uh, Google Translate. Oh, what are we Google Translate, you're a treat. So hats <laughs> off to Melanie. And there are some great performances there. Um, I'm so excited for the French team. So Japan finally finished, finished, finished their process of selecting their teams. Finally? They only finally, did it finally. nine months early, you mean, instead of 50 months early? <laughs> right. Only nine months. No, uh, how many months is yeah. it? It's, Ju no, it's July, soon. August, October, September. That comes out. This you know, three the months. Order of the months, July, August, <laughs> October. I just skip. I always feel like world is in October. That's when it's supposed to be. So when it starts in September, it throws me off and I forget the yeah. month exists. It's a whole month earlier than it was last year. Yeah. But I do like that it's not overlapping with Halloween because. I'd hate missing Halloween, and we never get to enjoy Halloween when we're at Worlds. So, well, now that the important yeah, news is out of the, the way. The problem is solved. <laughs> um, so, the big news for Japan, they had already selected uh, four uh, members of their five-person team based on all-around standings at competitions. <sighs> but uh, their final <laughs> team member was... Do you have feelings? feelings? No, I, I, wrong I've way. never talked about that on the show before. <sighs> um, their final team member was confirmed. Ashikawa Arara, 2021 World Beam Champion, made Japan's team this year. So she didn't <gasps> make the team last year. She made Japan's team this year, which means that Japan will have three World Beam medalists on the same team and two World Beam champions on the same team. So the two, last two World Beam champions will both be on Japan's team, as well as Miata got bronze uh, last year at Worlds. So yeah, it's gonna be a be it's gonna be a Beam Festival for beam Japan's festival. gonna show. Japan's gonna show everyone like this is the composition that they want. It seems like not ever, they're like, so it seems, hey, other countries, you haven't been watching us enough and you should watch us more because this is what Beam is supposed to be. We keep winning and you keep not noticing. Speaking of which, we like talked, we're doing. <laughs> we talked about this on behind the scenes, but um, how in the judges meeting, they showed uh, McCollum's Olympic Beam routine and we're like, this is the wrong composition here's an example of how not to do it and you guys all remember how the u.s literally had to change their composition mid-olympics because uh what was his name i've always already forgotten it tom forrester was such a disaster as a um leader of the u.s team and you know he might have tried to force people to change their routines. Who knows? But yeah, he was such a disaster and was saying, we can't get any feedback. We don't know how things will score. Oh, so anyway, it's just going to show that everything we said about that, that quad was right and him was right. And it was a total mess. And I love that one of the uh, judges said, um, who is this? They don't understand the code at all. <laughs> That's what we said. Anywho, you guys, validation. I it did have good. a question about uh, the Japanese event nationals, meaning I was screaming at the computer. Not actually, because I don't feel that strongly about anything, but I was internally screaming at the computer because Miata was there competing with her, like, barely getting through the competition she had to compete at with her, like, ankle foot issues. And then she's yeah. here at a competition. She'd already qualified her spot. And she's like, you're limping off of every event. And I'm like, why are you why? making her compete? Why is this yes. happening? I know. Protect her at all costs. She's your best one and your team leader now. And now she's not, she's going to have to take so long to heal that because she's re, 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 owied it. Oh, yeah. Um, I want to mention Dutch championships because two huge members of the team are not there. Yeah, on the they released the roster for Dutch championships, which are this weekend. 
and I was like, skim for a Thora, skim for a Thora, skim for a Thora. I, zero match was found. I was like, where is she? And Sana Fairman wasn't yeah. on, um, on the list. And we were talking about her just this past week on Behind the Scenes because she's doing her uh, sights to bardwaj in combination at this gym where she's just like doing bars over a cliff. <laughs> This freaking gym they designed for men and then just added women's equipment with absolutely no regard for their health and safety. A sights to a hard wash, you guys. A sights to a hard wash. A sights to a hard wash. And it's so easy for her. Just boopity boop. Sights to a hard wash. It's like, you know, she's been doing it for years. She's like, I just had this in my back pocket. I'm just going to do it for fun. And not to mention doing it in this gym where the stairs are exactly zero feet from the low bar mat i i mean zero feet zero inches like if you peel off towards the low bar you will go off cliff into a wall super safe super safe where are the people who should be putting holding a mat over there at least putting one on the stairs because like what's worse than falling on concrete (laughs) falling down stairs could you make gymnastics more dangerous Mm. i don't know concrete stairs <laughs> but oh. speaking of falling down stairs you know who is on the list for dutch nationals bart derlo oh, <laughs> back, you guys he is showing all his stuff on instagram he's doing my favorite new thing that he's doing is he's doing voiceovers and commenting on his routines what he was thinking during teams other r- routines oh i'm so excited for bart to be back is he did his time off release the pressure that he's always felt which we found about, out about in his documentary where he composed a song for it um, so that he is not going to be Bart Calamity Jane Durlo anymore. Is he going to be a whole new Time Bart? Time will tell. Time will so tell. Excited. So excited. I do want to mention something that happened at the uh, Austria World Cup, which is in Croatia. Okay, and, um, you know, we, I, this is going to be about men's gymnastics and scoring. Wow. I know. Wow. I know I'm doing my thank you, Kensley, for his consult on this. <laughs> thank you Ma- so much. Help me make sure I don't say the wrong thing, please. Right. I was like, can you verify everything and make sure I'm saying, but I am proud of myself because I have watched enough uh, men's gymnastics now that I uh, can, I can't actually identify when someone does the same skill twice in a row. So mm. you guys know how you can't do the same skill uh, twice in a row. And basically, so he's in the high for bar credit. final. I mean, <laughs> yeah, for credit. I mean, you can do it as many times as you want, but you just know, like to write that on a napkin and send it to Gage because sometimes that <laughs> message has not been received. And the thing is, you don't want to do this because you're just adding in more opportunity for deduction. And everybody knows the way the code is if you breathe, you get a deduction. So that's why you limit the number of skills you do. That's smart gymnastics. Anywho, so, you know, Tin, former, uh, uh, I guess you're always a high bar world champion, but not the current sure. one. Can't take um, it away. Yeah, from Croatia. And so he does his routine and it's a little messed up and you can tell something's wrong because at some point he reaches over to his left arm as if he's gonna almost like he was gonna do a one arm giant or like reach over to cross his hands into mix grip which was weird because he was doing forward giants but um it would have been the wrong way but something was just off it wasn't as good as his prelims routine um and basically he got um instead of a 57d score which is what he should have gotten he got a 60d score which is higher than his pre- prelims routine even though this was clearly a worse routine than he did in prelims also i really like the app that they use from this croatian app that has video of each routine and um the scores much like what we have here in the us with the verdius app which is fantastic and has even more functionality um So I was like, what is happening with this? So he said, quote, and this is from the osajekgym.com news for for this World Cup. He said, his buckle grips came off. So I don't know what that means came off, if that means it broke or it means that it was just came loose, came undone. He said, my buckle grip got untangled, not all the way, halfway through. And it's really hard mentally. I couldn't think about the rest of the exercise, just how to fix it. It was um, taught that when this happens, I get off the apparatus because it's dangerous, but I couldn't get down there. Um, I wanted to make it to the end, end quote. So Mm -hmm. it's, I, so what's unclear about this? Um, So here's the thing. He was judged incorrectly and allegedly 
Um, this was brought to the attention of the judges uh, and to the attention of meat officials, and no one, because Tin himself didn't put in a uh, inquiry on his own D score, which is the only kind of why would you put you? in? Because you got had- a D score that was too high. You're not going to be like, oh, judges. Oopsie, actually, you gave me too many points. And he's in position to win a bronze medal. Uh, he didn't put in an inquiry on, you know, getting wrongly judged. And I feel like he probably thought, oh, well, this is payback for all the times I wasn't fairly judged all the other years. Um, but, you know, no one changed the score, even though it was clearly obviously wrong. But this is, like, so egregious. It's almost like mm. they gave him the D score he would have gotten if he had done his prelims routine even better i I just it uh, it's so so much worse than his prelims routine and i mean he did an amazing job for having a grip coming off so my question for you that's what you that that must be what had happened when we see him kind of like take one hand off the bar and go over to his other hand he might have been must have been like ah what is happening (laughs) yes exactly it's really weird um and so he did the other thing is like he did yeah two stoop halves instead of doing one stoop full in this routine. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it was like he was trying to repeat it and get credit, but then his grip was off. So my question for you is what are, let's go over the rules about if you have an equipment failure, even this is unclear. Um, Yeah. I mean, if what I read this as is that the buckle came loose or off or something, right? It wasn't like a tear. It wasn't like a torn grip. But it, it doesn't, it sounds like, if the buckle literally came off of his grip, like came unconnected from his grip, that would be grounds for a do-over because that's an equipment failure. Whereas if the buckle just came unbuckled, you can't. So that's your own fault, which is why you should always tape your grips or tape your buckle after you do it. It's so rare for this to happen with a buckle, though. Um, that's why you wear I mean, buckle I grips because Velcro you comes have apart. To sh- I mean, I think the grip has to be torn. To, to get a redo and you would and he would have had to hop off the apparatus and show the judges at that point that there was an agri- equipment malfunction which he didn't do so the po- issue was kind of moot about a redo because you have to you know yeah stop and be like i let me show you my broken grip so that i can get a redo um and he didn't do that so it kind of doesn't come up but yeah i mean the wording in the men's code is that the gymnast has the right to repeat the entire exercise on rings or horizontal bars without deduction at the end of the rotation with approval by the d jury if the gymnast shows a significantly torn hand guard causing a fall or exercise interruption so it doesn't even say if the if your buckle came off or if there's any other anything else other than an actual torn part of your grip the actual and it's a significantly torn, which is interesting and up for yeah. debate. <laughs> yeah, that's really interesting. I wonder if, in his case, if it was actually the buckle coming coming apart, rat and coming off the leather rather than a, an unbuckled buckle. If they would add that, because surely that can happen. I mean, that happens way less than the actual grip breaking. Grips breaking constantly. Um, yeah. The metal warping? I don't know. Um, I So the other question here is, like, since he didn't jump off the bar and show them, he couldn't redo his routine. Right. So that was not an issue. Yeah, an that, option. yeah that's not an option. Um, what do you think? I mean, the other thing I want to mention is that the actual president of the country of Croatia was present here. To oh, watch here we go, Jessica's conspiracy. I see the conspiracy building, like, smoke I, in the background what? behind you. You're How ready I didn't say anything. I'm just <laughs> saying that's a fact of the competition that he was there. So um, would it have made a difference if it was a female president? Where are we going here? <laughs> no, I, so, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> what do you think should happen? Because the FIG never responds to a comment for, hey, are you going to punish these judges for messing up so bad? Like, they don't. It's only, you know, they, they, they do not comment on it. So, and the thing is, this is one of the things that we're talking about, about accuracy in judging. Like, what if this mm-hmm. was a, a, you know, world final? Or what if this was the Olympic final? Because it's the same thing that happened in the 2004 Olympics. <laughs> Yeah, that's never happened before. We have that's why we have an open ended code, Jessica. Right? It fixed right, all so that. never repeat 2004 <laughs> Olympics, men's gymnastics. No. Um, 
Well, you know my long-standing belief that I believe you should be able to inquire other gymnast scores. Yeah. yeah so, and, you know. And make like, a limit. Whoever finished fourth in this competition, I think, should be able to submit an inquiry on Tin Serbich's D-score. What if you made it so – I know they're like, well, we don't want that to constantly happen, but you already have a limit. Like, you can only do – like one or two inquiries per meet, and you also have to pay. So what if you made it that, you know, anyone can do an inquiry but from another team, but you can only use it one time or something like that and make it cost or even more. Or you just more. have, like, the op- you write in the code that there's, like, an official's review that is, like, the member of the technical committee that's there overseeing the competition. If they're like, huh, no... That, you know, if the if like the observing member of the technical committee sees a judging error, they're allowed to intervene in the D score. Yeah. So right now it, the rule is you have you can intervene if everybody is too off too off the mark, which doesn't help in this situation. If all the, the judges have D scores that have too big of a variation, they can intervene. Um, and the problem with that is if everybody makes the same mistake, it's not caught and the head judge can't intervene. So what we want is a situation where the head judge judges and if all the other judges have are in range but messed up, they can just be like, screw you guys. Some people just like to give us no strings attached money. They don't want to bother with joining Club Gym Nerd. And so they just donate. You can find our donate button for a no strings attached donation at the bottom of the club page at gymcastic.com forward slash club. We have some Gymtronet news for you guys. Lacey Dagan of OSU is now going to be the assistant coach for Arizona State. Jordan Weaver, is it any shock to you that she has been locked down with a big giant contract by Arizona through the 2028 season? How much money do you think they gave her? Not Arizona. Arizona, whoops, Arkansas, <laughs> sorry. Um, Arizona's like, we got what? We got who now? The pigs um, who eat, even though they're not pigs, they are razorbacks, a dangerous form of, in the pig family of animals. Whatever they are. What dangerous. was the question again? Was it about <laughs> How the much money? the hogs? Which, um, <laughs> yes, I don't know what the Latin of the hog family is. Maybe fact check <laughs> can look that up. But what, I don't think we need that information because it's not how, relevant. To Jordan much. Weber's contract. I don't know how much these coaches make. You, I bet it's, um, I don't know. I bet over how many years is that? Five, five years? Millions? A million? Z? Total over the five years? Yeah. It better be over a million for five years. Yeah. For an SEC head coach in gymnastics? Right. <laughs> Yeah. Five years, millions, chicken feed. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, remember Thomas Gonzalez? He like, it oh, has, is your um, uh, men's football coach an Olympic gold medalist? No? Well, then I want double. Take <laughs> That's your- what I want, Jordan. <laughs> That's what I want, Jordan, to go to the athletic director and say, oh, how many coaches at the school have Olympic gold medals? None except None? me? Oh, hmm. bye-bye. Oh, hmm. <laughs> okay, do you remember Thomas Gonzalez of Chile? How could I forget? I only think about him every day. <laughs> Who basically did <laughs> uh, the most beautiful Soviet-style floor, and he was the 11th or 12th person to make floor finals in 2017, <laughs> when the, the year of Bart saving floor by pointing out the hole, and then everybody who said that they felt the hole got to go <laughs> into my floor finals. Uh, his pancake straddle? Oh my god, Thomas Gonzalez. Mm-hmm. So he is publishing his first book, Champion, Lessons, Triumphs, and Falls of an Olympic Gymnast. Also joining the book club, Maggie Nichols. So she shared the cover of her book, which is called her memoir, which is called Unstoppable. And it's coming out January 2024. So you guys, pre-sale, put it on your Christmas lists so it can arrive at your door after right as the new year turns okay also we talked about this a lot on behind the scenes suny is getting a home state olympic trials so the olympic trials will be in minnesota june 27th and 30th and behind the scenes we talk about many strategies about how you can afford to go 
and what to do because the, the tickets are three times the as expensive interesting. <laughs> as, that, as they have been in the past. So behind the scenes, I list all the strategies for affordability. <laughs> I mean, if you want to sit I'm, on the ceiling, you can pay, what was it, $30? You only something. have to pay one arm instead of two. Yeah. Right. Um, you know that this is like just a little bit more than a year away. Olympic trials. So we're getting to the period where if you are going to claim, I told you she was going to make the team. I told you years before that she was going to make the team. You have to get those in like now because otherwise it's too close. And then that's not like some sort of Nostradamus thing. That's just watching the gymnastics. So you have to, you have to get all of your things in now. If you want to claim them in the future for being like, I told you she was going to make the Olympic team. I told you. I suggest Carving it in stone, dating it, and then taking a picture with the metadata. And this is the way we will know you did not change okay. it. So, okay. yeah, I feel like I'm talking to what, you. This is not to the uh, this is not to the listeners. This is I know, to you. but I make my suggestions to the listeners so they can be as right okay. as I am about it. And I always <laughs> make my this. It's the year before the Olympics Classic that I make my. Like okay. when I said, oh, Lori Hernandez mm -hmm. is going to be an Olympian. Right. That is when she was a junior. I think I said that. But and Simone. So watch the juniors at Classic for 2028. But this Classic is going to tell you a lot, you guys. And okay. I wish it was in Chicago, Chicago. But anyway. <laughs> um, this is because Jessica's hoping a certain former or from previous Olympic all-around champion competes at Classic. And then or three. Like you are ready to <laughs> make make your prediction. Yeah, I'm going to be like, you, you, you. And then there's always going to be some junior who's going to boop up in 2024. I don't think so anymore. I don't no? think so this year. Because there's so many solid, badass seniors, twenty mid-20-year-olds who are ready. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, we have some dumpster fire news to get through before the good news. So... Uh, trigger warnings. FBI is seeking help in Michigan gymnastics photographer investigation. David Eric Yellen of Royal Oak in eastern Michigan was arrested June 1st and charged with possession and distribution of CSAM child sexual abuse material. Yellen was also contracted by USA Gymnastics Judges Association to create training material and training films for new gymnastics judges. So the FBI is asking if you have any information, visit fbi.gov forward slash Yellen, Y-E-L-L-E-N investigation and fill out the questionnaire or contact the FBI in Detroit. And it's Yellen investigation at fbi.gov. A New Jersey coach was arrested. Sasha C. Rout, 55 of Manchester Township, New Jersey, is charged with first degree aggravated sexual assault and three counts of second degree sexual assault. He worked as a youth gymnastics coach in several locations, so several different gyms across Monmouth County for about 30 years. Former West Virginia coach has passed away. So Linda Burdett Good died Tuesday in Hilton Head, South Carolina at 74. She was the West Vir University of West Virginia uh, coach for 37 seasons from 75 to 2011. In 29, she became the only coach to earn 600 career wins with the Mountaineer team. Um, and her 35 winning seasons, including 14 with 20 or more wins. Um, she didn't have a losing record any season after 1981. That's pretty impressive. That's the um, raccoon hat gun team. If you, d if you okay, don't remember you. You. what what's the start of their... It's not a pioneer. It's a Davy Crockett, basically. They're ma I mean, the mountain. The mask. Which you the just mountaineer. said. Yes. I said, did I say, I said pioneer. Not, you said mountaineer. Not pioneer. You got it right. Did I? Okay. Oh, good. I thought I said pioneer. I'm glad you know what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Illinois. Uh, I should laugh when I say this. Men's gymnastics, you guys. Uh, Illinois is dropping boys gymnastics. So the Illinois High School Association voted to discontinue boys gymnastics in the state series. So I don't know if you guys live in states that have um, high school gymnastics. It's one of the greatest things ever. My well, still to this day, one of my favorite jobs ever that I've had. It's this and coaching high school gymnastics are my absolute favorite jobs I've ever had in my entire life. Um, so the state 
uh, series tournament will no longer be held um, when the state series has less than 7% of member schools entering the team. So if you guys think that you're on the edge, make sure that you have that, meet that 7% if you want to stay in it. Okay. So um, good news. Back to the good mm-hmm. news. So there's been a giga tease. This is the Global Impact Gymnastics Alliance has hinted on social media. It will be, quote, the first of its kind women's pro gymnastics platform. So more info coming soon about that. I'm excited. What's That's never been done. A women's league? That's never been done. There's been pro attempts with women and men, but not a women's league. So Oklahoma. OU is getting a $13.75 million renovation. Is there just an endless amount of oil money in that in Oklahoma? What they I am glad that they are just basically like Oklahoma Gymnastics just funneling it right out of the ground and into their facilities. This is the best use of oil <laughs> right money, into the you guys. Yeah. yeah, I have no idea if that's where it comes from, but that's what I think. So the Board of Regents is going to consider the design phase plans for an expansion of the Fearson Gymnastics Center. The expansion to the Gymnastics Center calls for roughly 15,734 square feet of addition to the facility. 15,000 square feet of facility. Oh, my God. Oh, that's pretty amazing. Do you I think KJ that. just gets to visit the other, like, will visit the other college gyms and take pictures and then just send them to <laughs> OU? And it's like, I want that. And I want that. Like an Amazon yes. wish list. Where she's just like, I want that. And 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 they're like, how much? 13.75 million? Done. Done. Here For you, you go. KJ, anything. You can have it. Yeah. I mean, that's what she deserves. That's what that team deserves. And also the men, because the men win a lot too. Um, speaking of men, huh. Uh, tell me on a scale of one to ten, how much of a slap in the face is this to the Minnesota men's program that used to exist? M- college gymnastics that got canceled during the Olympic year with an uh, Olympian, a potential Olympian on the team, uh, Shane Wiskus. So um, University of Minnesota has approved a $15.5 million gymnastics center. Mm. Not for the men. They got rid of them. Oh. So now they can spend... All the, what was the budget was something like a pittance. Uh, what is it, like 0.1% of this budget that the men's <laughs> master's team used to stay alive? Um, so it's supposed to be completed in January of 2025. I think they looked at the budget for the Oklahoma gymnastics expansion and they were like, mm, we're going to do one better and we're going to spend $15.5 million because we expect after this SUNY Olympic the SUNY Olympics of Paris. The SUNY bump. <laughs> the SUNY bump. We will need a giant gym. Uh, also, I cannot love this story anymore. Fabian Hambushin, a Olympic champion and world champion, Olympic champion. Um, he was. This is what I, I I'm getting. I think from my research and translation of this. I think he was on a show called Viva la Drag. And they, uh, my understanding Viva of this, La Diva, Viva La Diva, which is a drag TV show. But basically, I think it's like the masked singer, but you have to guess who the mask, the drag person in drag is. Mm. That's what I kind of got from it. So you got German listeners can tell me if I'm wrong about this or what it is. So basically, he posted pictures of himself in his in drag where he has. How would you describe this, including his wig? Um, it's sort of like, I don't know, you should describe it's there's a vague like Queen of Hearts thing going on, but then it's black and well, you do the colors because I don't know what this color is. This is purple. Yeah, it's purple with like a leather. Uh, no, what's that stuff that people they put themselves in suits and suck the air out of and it looks like they're gonna die, but it's like a it's a kink. What what pl- it's like not plastic. It's um, and it's stretchy. <laughs> What's that material you called? You have taken me to a different world here. Latex! Late- black latex stripe, sort of, with black latex gloves and shiny patent leather, maybe huge heel boots, I imagine. Yeah. And uh-huh. like a like off one arm, he has a, what would you call, it's like a, it looks like a, 
It's not a high it's a gravy boat. <laughs> a w- <laughs> <laughs> he has a one a sleeve as a gravy boat, boat where or you like can put sna- where you can thing? hide snacks to for the whole you know for the show because you might get hungry. And then that because um, it takes a long time to get into this, which is one of the things he put in his post about how much he respected the amount of work and time that goes into drag now that he's done it. Um, and he also has a neon green, the most neon green a neon green can get. Like if it was a Simpsons cartoon of a nuclear event and something glow in the dark radiated rolling down the street that's the color that it would be uh wig and um so he said i love what he said about this he said respect recognition and appreciation is what we could, should give to everyone every day because every person is worth the same and um he also got married again this weekend because when you're a celebrity you have to get married multiple times like simone did you have to have your civil ceremony then your wedding with people and then your wedding with more people Everybody knows that. So congrats to him. And I love that post. It's a lovely uh, Pride Month post by Hambushin. So we will see you guys on Behind the Scenes at Friday at noon Pacific, our regular time. Send us all your questions. Uh, we have so many Peace Corps follow-up questions. And they're gymnastics-related Peace Corps stories, you guys. I'm so excited about this. Yes, 96 Olympics when you're in the Peace Corps, what happened? where you were mm. stationed. Uh, and remember to check your Club Gym membership and make sure you're up to date. Please subscribe um, or rate us wherever you listen to podcasts. And remember, we now have our regular show is public on YouTube, so you su- can subscribe and rate and comment and tell all your friends if you want to. And uh, until next week, please remember to take off on gay, split on rights, happy Juneteenth, and we will see you guys on Friday on Behind the Scenes. Thanks for listening. This show is created, executive produced, produced, edited, audio engineered, and published by me, Jessica Coburn. Managing editor in charge of show notes, podcast content, and wrangling over enthusiasm is Spencer Barnes. Our news editor is Uncle Tim of gymnastics-history.com. And customer service IT, Gymtranet News, and additional production services are provided by Steve Cooper, a.k.a. Fact Check. <laughs>